in cool water the digital dope man and we about to go in tonight you know i'm gonna be unadulterated in my thought process and what i need to say um you know before i do all of that naturally condolences going out to nipsey hustle's family lauren london the wife the kids uh his compadres homies and everybody that was around his in his camp you know the brother was trying to do some things being a young young cat you know uh early 30s you know he was he was he was bubbling um and he was doing a few things that you know is definitely to be commended um so you know you want to give respect where respect is due and then you know <clears throat> for those old those of us that are a little older, you know, we analyze it a little different. We see the game in uh a different light and a different aspect of what should have been going on and what probably went on. Uh in most cases. So. I'm going to do a blog on this as well. But I'm like let me just get my feet wet. This title of this is going to be. The destruction. Of an urban legend. Nipsey Hussle. The destruction. Of an urban legend. And. Nipsey. Being from Los Angeles, the Crenshaw area, definitely um, was making some major power moves uh, Born in Miris, I think his last name is pronounced Ash Ashungdom Ash I think it's Ahingdom or Ashungdom, Asingdom Uh 81585. He was a Leo, fire sign, strong spirit, you know, wasn't gonna stop, was gonna keep pushing until he got to where he needed to be. Uh blew up on the independent mixtape scene. And uh <clears throat> was a crit. And you know, Somehow or another was able to garner some level of success for himself and pull himself out of the situation that he was born in. So, you know, that's always to be commended, man, because at the end of the day, you know, it's hard to rise in America without any um, some type of uh, leverage or some type of uh, hand up. You know what I'm saying? He was uh, married to Lauren London. I think they got married about a year or two ago. Had a child together. Um, in which case, he started to do black power economics. You know, I heard him talk about Master P and some of the things that P did, J Prince. Like, he was a student of the game. You know what I mean? He actually studied some of the stuff that some of them other brothers was doing and implemented it. I mean, from what I heard, you know, real estate. He had the, the clothing store. He had the uh, virtual offices for the techies, classes, and education for those that wanted to learn coding. And, um, you know, some of those things like that that, that allowed him to be able to uh, turn around and really put opportunity in the hands of uh, those black individuals, man, in the community, in the hood that wanted to shine, that wanted to rise. You know what I'm saying? So that is something to be commended. Uh, in which case you always want to commend somebody, man, who's trying to give back because it's so many people that don't give back. And um, Nipsey 
was one of those folks. Let me take a quick two second break. Hold tight. Okay, man. So, <clears throat> gotta get some man that's getting put me in this mood so I can really spit this juice. So I'm cool water the digital dope man from Barroom Chats. Like I was saying, Nipsey was doing some good things. He did a lot of good things. Now, realistically, I didn't follow Nipsey like that. I heard about Nipsey through the grapevine when he started talking about Master P. Because Master P is from my era. Jay Prince is from my era. Easy E is from my era. These are independents that went in and bubbled and did it their way back when I was coming up. So, you know, Nipsey, hella young. You know what I'm saying? He would be my little brother. Um, so, you know, you say, damn, you know, that's cool. You know, this dude, he out there getting it. You know, um, but then, like I said, the flip side of it. So now he was just murdered uh, a day or so ago by a young cat named Eric Holder, who's about two years younger than him. I think he was a he was a crit. You know, I seen the picture. He was, you know, wearing this blue rag. So he somehow or another gets to the store, in front of the store, and shoots Nipsey. From what I'm understanding, he shoots him in the chest, starts to run away. I guess he don't feel like the job is done. He comes back, and he shoots him in the head. In the meantime, ain't none of this being stopped by the bodyguards. Ain't nobody firing off no rounds at this dude, because Nipsey supposedly has security on the scene. Oh. This reminds me of the same thing that happened to King, the same thing that happened to Malcolm X, the same thing that happened to us somewhat towards Khalid, Khalid Muhammad. Inside your circle, it's always somebody. That's working for the opposing team. But you don't know that. But they with you all the time. Now, let's rewind a little bit. Let's 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 spit some juice. Let's get into this for real, for real. Nipsey was a young dude who managed to amass about four million dollars for as a net worth. And he had the consciousness to start understanding. I gotta put my money into some shit that's going to bring me more wealth, but at the same time, I'm blessing the people along the way. So he had a whole uh, holistic, healthy food grocery store. He had the clothing store, the virtual offices for the, for the folks, the business people. He was doing the real estate. I believe he had a restaurant on the rise. He had some, some dealings going with the, uh, Puma Corporation who was going to do something at the store he was in talks with the mayor and the city chief of police about trying to get crip, crip in the gang violence with the Crips and the Bloods which ain't nothing new because they was doing it real heavy back in the 90s Cube tried to you know I think he brought them together for a minute Mr. Farrakhan was trying to you know he was trying to get them to see a different light hell Killer Mike just got through doing something I believe with the Crips and the Bloods which brought them, you know, try to bring them, excuse me, try to bring them back together. The Crips and the Bloods, to me, coming together is a lost cause. And I say that because it's been going on since the rolling 60s, since 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 the uh, 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 Pookie Williams and them back in the day who ended up going to jail, uh, which he was a Crip. And, you know, never started the Crips per se to be a, 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 a gang of violence, but more of a gang of love to help protect those in L.A. and surrounding areas from white supremacy. That's really what, if I'm not mistaken, what the Crips and possibly the Bloods was for, because the white supremacists, the Irish gangs and, and, and some of those uh, white individuals 
was going into black neighborhoods and was vandalizing and terrorizing some of the black people that lived in uh, different parts of L.A., Los Angeles, and some of these suburban counties probably. Uh, and they started them to protect them. But somehow or another, it got infiltrated and it became a gang of violence. But I believe that's a dying cause. You can't rescue them dudes because there's too many people on the inside, man, that's working, you know, with the police, CIA, FBI, whatever you want to call it. You dig? Nipsey and me and my partner, B. Brown, talked about this the other day. Nipsey didn't get the, the, the memo. The more successful you are, and he knew, because he was fairly a conscious dude to be a young cat, the more of a target you are. But you can't put yourself in a position where you put your life on the line and risk being murdered solely for the upliftment of the hood when you really not a martyr yourself. Everybody and anybody can talk conscious. You know, you read a couple of books and you hang around enough people, you're going to spit the juice because it's just naturally going to be in you. But if you ain't like King or you wasn't like Malcolm X or you wasn't like a Mega Evers or you wasn't like a, 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 a Rosa Parks and you was willing to die for the bullet, then you have to position yourself because you're really just an artist. He was an artist who had some consciousness and was doing good in the hood, position yourself to put enough parameters between you and the hood so that you don't catch the bullet because you're too accessible. You can't have one foot in the hood and the other foot in paradise. It don't work. It's never worked. That's why people move out the hood when they get a certain amount of wealth. And then he was flashy. You know, he had the jewelry. He had the cars. He had all the necessary things that's going to make any young cat who ain't got shit very jealous. You did. And you know you got haters. You know people looking at you. So this starts the demise and the destruction of Nipsey Hussle because... The minute you arrive at a certain level of success, it's always somebody plotting to take it away. It's always somebody looking to 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 bring about your demise. Now, from what I read, this other brother made a very, very good point, And I'm going to see if I can pick this up uh, from a friend of mine. She sent this to me and it made a lot of sense. Now, I'm just digging in to this Nipsey thing. And it's going to be, you know, I'm going to be digging into it for a while because I like to analyze. But this dude here said this, and it makes a lot of sense. So a nigga from the 6-0, which I guess he was referring to the gang, goes to jail, 6-0 Crips, I guess is what it was, cooperates with the police, gets out of jail. Two days later, he kills Nipsey, Nobody shot back. Security and day uh, first ran. The security and, I guess, to whoever it was, first ran. Nipsey's still alive after the first shot. Shooter slowly runs off, then doubles back. Still not one homie or security shoots at him. He then finishes... His job shooting Nipsey in the head, then slowly runs off again, just to double back again to kick Nipsey in his head, then slowly runs off the scene with not one shot being fired. After the assassination of a million dollar crip in front of his store in his hood, surrounded by gang members, it don't add up. So, that's why I said you 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 hard pressed to not know who you got in your camp because a lot of people in your camp gonna be the first ones who actually gonna sell you out because they either got something on them they got a case on them they got some type of charge or they just want to be paid and everybody got a price everybody got a price now again my personal opinion 
is Nipsey didn't have enough pull and enough muscle to be a problem and a threat in the American culture. He was rising and becoming a prominent player in business, but he didn't have enough muscle. He didn't have enough juice to where you had to fear Nipsey. See, Nipsey might have said a couple of things consciously that some of the young cats might have got turned on to or some older cats might have got turned on to, but it wasn't enough that you was running around, man, finna start marching and rioting off of the shit he said. You see, he wasn't that dude like somebody who didn't have shit could be and get the people really riled up because he was a $4 million dude. So there's a level of reserve you gonna have when you got that type of paper that you sitting on and then you got a, a, a beautiful wife like Lauren London, some beautiful kids, you're not willing to risk it all because you're not a martyr. You're not dying for the cause. You talks about the cause, but you're not dying for the cause. So in my personal opinion, now what this brother here is saying is that he's basically, this dude that shot Nipsey was a paid agent, a paid informant. And he might have been. Because really, at the end of the day, it's about <clears throat> killing anybody who was going to bring about black economic freedom. See, you can march all you want to. You can holler sitting at the table of equality all you want. That shit don't mean nothing Till you start talking about the money. See, that's what got King killed. He got tired of bootlicking and, and start talking about the money. See, Malcolm X got killed because he started talking about unity amongst all the races. And then supposedly the people that brought you up, that cleaned you up, that taught you the game, y'all at odds now. But the minute you start talking about coming together and doing some big things, man, and really, you know, financially, socially, spiritually, now we got a problem. We got a huge problem. So, again, the destruction of Nip Nipsey Hussle. Same thing with if you ever read and I'm partially into the book and have not finished it. And I'm so far behind, but I got to do it. The black, uh, the, uh, the destruction of the black civilization by Chancellor Williams. Comparing the two. Here is black folks at the height. At the height of civilization. Pharaohs. Kings. We got pyramids, we got an economic base, we got we got trade, we got commerce, we got all this. And then slowly but surely, somehow or another, the European, the Arab, and other ethnicities brings us to our knees and we become the tail, they become the head. And from this day on, we've been in a bad situation ever since. We've been in a bad situation ever since. People made comments about the conspiracy that Nipsey Hussle was going to do, uh, do a Dr. Davey, Dr. Sabi documentary. And that may have been one of the causes. But again, and, and, and that goes back to what I was saying, Sabi wasn't, he wasn't big enough, in my personal opinion, to shape shift the American uh, culture, to shape shift black people into doing whatever. You know, he said, you know, people, oh man, he cured AIDS. Well, it's a lot of doctors out here that can cure AIDS that's in a holistic realm because they understand what the body is capable of doing. So there's nothing really phenomenal about it unless you don't know about the information. See, I got the information. Dr. Lilo Africa got, he got stuff in his book, talk about AIDS and all the rest of them that you could be doing. And if you get with the right hol holistic practitioner, you can get rid of AIDS, you can get rid of herpes, you can get rid of a lot of stuff. But to the people that don't know, they think, they may think that Dr. Sabi did something super phenomenal because they are unfamiliar and unaware of what the game is about. 
So I don't see Nipsey Hussle being murdered based off that. Now, they say Dr. Sabi was suspiciously murdered when he went down to Honduras or wherever he went to. And it, you know, boom. But these are conspiracy theories that ain't never really been validated. You did. I understand and know that there is an interforce, a secret end of, you know, society of things that go on that may dictate the outcome of some of these behaviors by other people. Now, if Eric Holder, the guy that shot Dipsy Hustle, was an MKA, MK Ultra uh, respondee or actee, then it could have been somebody that, you know, turned on the chip. If you remember that movie that Denzel Washington was in, The Manchurian Candidate. And he had that chip in his head. And as a result of that, he was acting very strangely because he didn't have control of his own mental state of mind. Then he found it and he got it out. There was another guy that had the chip and I think he went on a rampage. Then there was a real life Manchurian candidate up in New York who went through and they killed a bunch of people in the subway down in the New York train station. So we don't know what possessed Eric to want to go run up on him like that. Beyond the jealousy. Beyond the jealousy. But the question remains, if you was a dude who had security and they always was with you, why didn't they buck him down when they when he pulled up? Why didn't they run up on him when he pulled up? Why was he able to come back two or three times to be able to finish the job? Those are questions that always is going to be lingering. But I think the destruction of Nipsey Hussle started the minute he thought he could play in the hood and then go live in paradise. You know, back in the 90s, a lot of them cats, because it was prominent, you wanted to keep your street cred. You wanted to look like you were still part of the people. And a lot of them cats like Q, Dre, Snoop, you know, they would they would, they would, would come through the hood, you know, whether it be for the MTV video or whether it would be uh, uh, they would shoot a video or, 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 you know, they might drop at their mama house. But by the time they start making real money, they moved out. They had to move to the hills because you can't live in the hood and be that wealthy and think ain't nobody going to touch you. It's just not going to happen. And I don't know where Nipsey was living at, but I'm sure he wasn't living in uh, 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 Crenshaw, Compton, Crenshaw, Los Angeles in the neighborhood and then running all them businesses and be and making that kind of money when he know, boom, I got to go, I got to go up top. You see? So he, he, he really, in my personal opinion, started his own demise by thinking he could connect with the hood and nobody in the hood would touch him. Now, not that he didn't know that, and I'm sure he did, but he was willing to risk it. But see, I say, why risk it? Because you just never know when that situation is going to evolve. You see what I'm saying? When are you going to, when, when is it going to evolve to the point where, to the point where you, you, you realize that black America can't be saved off of love alone. We can't save Black America off of love alone. It, it's a, it's a, it's, it's brothers that already been on the mission. Claude Anderson, Amos Wilson, uh, 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 who else is out there, man? That's real heavy in the game. Um, Phil Valentine, he been spinning. Taj Tariq Bay, um, Farrakhan. It's been on. It's been going on. These brothers been out here working for years. To bring about improvement to the hood. To bring about improvement to black quality of life. No one rapper can do it. No one rapper can. You know, the best thing he could have did was set up businesses and employ folk. But see, again, it goes back to business etiquette too. If you understand anything about business, it means you understand that you have to have people in place to run your shit so you are not prevalent. 
if you there running the business, you definitely a target. You definitely a target. There's no way in hell you could be opening up businesses and then being at the spot, you know, more than all, more often than not, and not think that somebody watching you. Jealousy just running our genes, man. Ain't nothing we can do about it. Especially if you got somebody like him who was riding in the Rolls Royce. You got, you know, you wrapped up in gold chains and gold wrists. You know what I mean? You tatted, you know, hair braided. You looking good. You got the best cologne on, best clothes. And then the nigga down the street, he, you know, he licking his lips like, man, I want a piece of that. There's nothing they could have did, man, that probably would have stopped that dude from killing him. Off the mere fact that that dude was probably super jealous. You know. So. You take a real deep look. And when we start talking about the destruction of the black civilization. There's an origin. And there's an ending. And most of us right now. We're in the middle. And the black civilization is still in the destructive period. We're no, there is no, no, no economic prosperity right now. So now you have somebody like Dr. Claude Anderson, who has been out here for over 30 years, telling us how to play this game called powernomics, black economic empowerment. And we still ain't caught on. Farrakhan been preaching about economic empowerment. Elijah Muhammad was preaching economic empowerment. Market Gar Garvey was preaching economic empowerment. Amos Wilson was preaching economic empowerment. And ain't nobody still ain't caught on yet. Now here Nipsey, Nipsey Hussle, who came through with his own blueprint, was practicing black economics, black economic empowerment. But he, 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 he forgot the key ingredient. You can empower the people, but you can't save them. They got to want to save themselves. And then we talk about gentrification. So if Compton, which is, I think, in, in you know, uh, Crenshaw, which is, you know, right in L.A. Or Compton, so I'm, I, I'm not from there, but I got partners that's from there and I'm Y'all can correct me when y'all listen to this. All those areas, South Central, Compton, Inglewood, um, Crenshaw, all them areas, man, are being gentrified. Oakland, they being gentrified. So, even though he was able to put a staple on some things in the neighborhood, he still didn't have enough muscle and power to, to, to divert the, the, the growing number of people that's going to be pushed out of the community. For him, it worked out fine because he'll be a staple in the community <coughs> with several businesses and being in bed with politicians, chief of police, other business owners. He'll be able, he would have been able to survive and thrive. But the majority of the individuals in those areas and across the country are getting pushed out. There is no amount of income that you can make to stay in a gentrified neighborhood unless you are in an upper middle class environment with a, I mean, upper middle class uh, uh, job making a, a considerable amount of money to be able to afford the high cost of living that's going on in these urban areas. I mean, I stay in one. You know? For him, it was cool. Because he was, a, you know, he was in a circle in the entertainment industry and had rose up with, you know, a $4 million plus net worth. You okay. You can stay anywhere in America. <laughs> You can you can live in a you can live in a high rise hotel. You can stay in Trump Towers. You can do whatever you need to do, and you're going to be okay because the money's coming in. But if those people that live there, slowly but surely, was going to be pushed out. So, i.e., the destruction of the black civilization through food, through real estate. 
through psychological warfare, through mental illness, through economic disparity. All that shit is part of the destruction process through vaccinations. Everything in here that I just that, that I just listed is part of the overall destruction of the black civilization. Now, he had his own economic blueprint for what he believed to be a place of prosperity trying to pull up the hood. And that's a good thing. But the majority of the hood may ride with you, but it's always a select few that's not going to ride with you. So we want to take a brief look, and I'm leaving this open-ended because, like I said, I'm going to have to dig into this some more. Who was this security team, and why weren't they on deck to bust a cap in, that, in, in Eric's ass? The minute he pulled the gun, they should have been firing too. Question unanswered. Why was Nipsey always accessible? When you know you can't be that accessible when you got that type of bread. Three, he should have had a bulletproof vest on and he should have kept a bulletproof vest similar to the 50 cent way of living. When you know you got haters and people that you run with and you a former, you are a former uh, possibly drug dealer and crip and there's still rivalry going on between y'all. You know this. Not that he wasn't thinking about it, but I'm just throwing it out there. And this is just, you know, me talking from, from a spectator's position. Bulletproof vest. First place that dude shot was at the chest. You know. You know, what 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 was what was going on in that brother's mind that he wasn't thinking some of these things, strategic things. And then once you got them businesses up. You had to be less and less involved in the hood. That's why you had to have your management team and your managers and, and, and the necessary people running the operation. So you wouldn't be on the scene as much. So you wouldn't be seen as much because being seen is also a means to being put 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 in a box. Uh, which will, which caused your untimely death. The destruction of Nipsey Hussle, an urban legend. We 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 got to delve into this man uh, again. I heard some of his music from way back. Like I said, I didn't really follow the brother too tough because uh, he's much younger cat. You know what I'm saying? But I heard about the positive, and that's what turned me on to him. I got I got I got I got to liking him about the positive that he was doing. So. I think that there are several things that may be part of it, you know, that do Eric could have been working, you know, as a, as a snitch for the FBI, CIA, and been an MK Ultra controlled agent, you know, to stop Nipsey's movement. But that's all speculation. I don't think that. Him doing a documentary on Dr. Sebi was going to bring about his demise. To me, him nor Sebi had enough muscle to make the, 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 the country get up in arms and move because y'all talked about good health and, and vaccination. I don't think it was enough of that because it's enough content out there, man, that everybody can find. Everybody can find, uh, you know, that, 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 that type of, that type of, uh, 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 information it's not it's not nothing new you know um who was his security team and why weren't they on deck to ensure you know his safety after after dude pushed up the first time um it's a lot of holes and gaps in this whole story that we're gonna have to take a serious look at in the future and really delve into so like i said i'm gonna con continue to do a little homework i'm gonna ponder on it and you know, like I said, I'm definitely gonna try to write my write me a nice little blog on the subject matter. Um, I just wanted to put this out 
you know, to kind of see exactly, you know, what what may be the take uh, in the long run, you know, by some other people and what they're going through as far as trying to dissect the situation. Um, it already has been alleged that Eric Holder's two of his family members have been murdered. So, you know, he liable to be he liable to be dead before the month out, especially if he in prison. Because if them niggas get a hold of him up in there, he gone. It ain't even going to be up, especially if you got a lifer. Somebody who in there and they in for life, ain't going to have no problem slitting that dude's throat. And everybody like Nipsey too. And then, and, then, and then Nipsey a crip. And you got some crips in there. And then I think the dude might have been a crip, but he might have turned snitch. Shit, man, you done, bro. You done. You ain't going to make it. You ain't, you, you ain't, you ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it. Uh... You ain't gonna make it in, uh, in prison, man, for thirty days before you 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 be you be you be bleeding out your out your rectum. Somebody gonna get you. But uh, so you know, we gonna see, man. I'm gonna end this. I'm cool water the digital dope, man. You can check me out at the blog ishiphopdead.com. Look for me at the digital dope man.com. Check me out the at the uh, podcast Barroom Chats on Spreaker.com, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And, uh, you know, let's build. Let's find out what's going on, man. You know, like I can say, dude, dude, dude did a few good things, but uh, somebody seemed fit that, you know, they wanted to cut it short so he didn't do no more. Peace and stay blessed. Holla.